the autopilot relies on a series of sensors all around the aircraft collecting data. This is Captain Sonia Laxo, a 23-year veteran at American Airlines. She, like other pilots, uses autopilot on every flight. And while it controls the ailerons, the flaperons and the spoilers on both wings, the elevator on the tail, and as well as the rudder. Autopilot isn't autonomous. She's here to explain just what it actually is, how the technology behind Autopilot works, and how it helps her and her fellow pilots get you to your destination. Quick note, Laxo flies Boeing aircraft and will be using Boeing terminology, but Autopilot works similarly on other commercial aircraft. The technical name for the Autopilot is the Auto Flight Control System, the AFCS. The AFCS, or Autopilot, is just one of an increasing number of automated technologies in the cockpit, many of which are designed to prevent dangerous scenarios. The Autopilot system is there to assist pilots, letting them take their hands off the yoke. The main components of the Autopilot system are the Autopilot Flight Director System and the Auto Throttle System, actually controlled by what we call the Mode Control Panel and the Flight Management Computer, the FMC which we most of the time just call it the box. The mode control panel and the box, those are both controlled by the pilots on the flight deck. By using the mode control panel, the flight management computer, we command that autopilot flight director system and the auto throttle system to perform the climbs, the cruise, the descents, the approach, and in certain circumstances, the actual landing itself. But the autopilot system extends outside the cockpit. The autopilot relies on a series of sensors all around the aircraft collecting data. GPS information, as well as data on airspeed and altitude, are fed back to the computers on board, which use the information to determine if a plane is veering from its preset route. The computers are always running. I mean, they're very fast speed, so anytime there's any little discrepancy, it's going to make an adjustment to keep that aircraft on that flight profile. That's the auto part the system's ability to make those adjustments to maintain level flight along a path without pilot input. The autopilot is actually controlling the flight controls. So it's going to be the ailerons, the flaperons, and the spoilers on both wings, the elevator on the tail, as well as the rudder. By adjusting those components, the autopilot is able to move the plane along one of three axes. We have the longitudinal axis from nose to tail, the lateral from wingtip to wingtip, and then the vertical, which goes straight down the middle of the aircraft. So when the aircraft is rotating on the longitudinal axis, it's using the ailerons, the flaperons, and spoils to do that. And then the lateral axis, that's being used the elevators. And then your rudder will be along the vertical axis. While autopilot can move the plane itself, it's not doing so without supervision. The autopilot is a tool. The autopilot doesn't fly the airplane. We fly the airplane through the automation of the autopilot. So while the autopilot is maintaining the wings level, flying the route, the pilot is always monitoring the autopilot. This relationship can go both ways, however. Certain autopilot systems prevent input from pilots that would, for example, force the plane to turn too sharply or raise the nose at too steep an angle. To understand just how a pilot uses autopilot, let's follow a flight's path, starting at the gate. Initially at the gate, we download the route into the FMC, the box, so then the autopilot knows what it needs to be following as per the route and also performance, airspeed, fuel consumption. The autopilot isn't engaged just yet. Pilots control the takeoff, but they must engage the autopilot above 28,000 feet due to vertical separation requirements. Though most pilots press the button sooner, letting the autopilot take control. Analogy would be the cruise control in your car. So it assists the driver, but the driver still has to be aware of their environment and react to that environment. Just like on the flight deck, we can disconnect the autopilot at any and all time and have full control of the aircraft. But that isn't common. Pilots typically spend only a few minutes per trip manually flying the plane though they are required to do regular proficiency checks in a flight simulator, during which certain segments of the flight must be hand-flown. Once autopilot is engaged, pilots' jobs don't stop. We're constantly working on our tasks to ensure the safety of our passengers getting from point A to point B. We're not sitting up here reading the newspaper. We don't have time for that. 
Instead, pilots are monitoring the fuel, planning for emergencies, and looking out for weather ahead, which could prompt them to change their instructions for the autopilot. We can use it to either go around the weather, either using a heading mode, or actually making changes into the route itself to go around the weather. So the one thing is we're always aviating, navigating, communicating, but with safety being our number one priority. When it comes time to land, pilots generally disengage autopilot and land themselves. But in certain types of weather with low visibility, pilots are actually required to do an auto land. You don't have that visual output out the window, so that actually helps. But you're again watching it like a hawk, and at any point in time, if it's not flying the, the path it's supposed to fly, we disconnect it. Automation, including the autopilot system, has contributed to record low accident rates in recent years. However, it was a faulty flight control system combined with pilot missteps and other factors that investigators say led to two fatal crashes of Boeing 737 MAX in 2018 and 2019. Boeing has since fixed the system and revamped pilot training, and with the FAA's approval, the MAX is now being used for passenger flights again. Meanwhile, airplane automation is continuing, with companies testing out increasingly advanced systems aimed at reducing pilot workload and enhancing safety. But for all its advances, Autopilot still has a lot to learn. The Autopilot cannot maneuver the aircraft from the gate to the runway and take off, nor can it maneuver the aircraft from the runway back to the gate. For now, think of Autopilot as an extra set of hands in the air, following Laxo's detailed instructions. 